Habits are a collection of endeavors, both major and minor, that are implemented into our regular daily routines. They are formed through being provoked by a cue or a catalyst that turn into a committed routine exposure or practice that eventually yield into the collection and sensation of rewards through those routines. Habits can be both crude and subtle, but we are going to focus on people's crude habits on this video because it is much more noticeable and conscious for all of us than subtle habits that involves minute body language cues and shifts in vocal tones on which most of us tend to be oblivious to. As we all know, actions always speak louder than words because our actions or behaviors are more closely associated with our instincts, desires, and impulses and are way more of a handful to be controlled, manipulated, and concealed than words. The body does not lie. That is why the old saying is that if you want to really know the truth about a person, don't waste your time trying to talk to them to get them to reveal themselves. Simply observe or find out about their behaviors. Everything happens for a reason, right? Similarly, all actions are done for a reason or a set of reasons. And it's no different with habits. They are done by us for two reasons. Either to fulfill certain cognitive and emotional voids, or to release certain cognitive and emotional expressions, or both. Whether they are healthy or unhealthy, constructive or destructive, it depends on the individual's specific choice of endeavors and the nature of the endeavors themselves. Here are a set of examples. A person may read lots of books in order to fulfill a cognitive and emotional void in terms of acquiring knowledge and understanding of a certain circumstance, such as learning human nature. Or they may read lots of books just to express their passion in a certain circumstance, such as mystery and crime novels. A person might go to the boxing gym in order to release certain emotional expressions such as anger and frustration, or they may go there to fulfill a certain cognitive void such as the desire to acquire skills and the sweet science of boxing. A person may watch pornographic materials in order to fulfill his sexual fantasies and fetishes and also express his passions within the sexual act because of the absence or lack of sexual interactions. And a person may consume drugs and alcohol in order to fulfill a certain emotional sensation that they are so desperate to experience. Or they may do it just so that they can force themselves to express certain emotions that they are uncomfortable in expressing when they are conscious and sober. So how can a person's selection and collection of habits determine that particular person's character? Once again, we look at the nature of the habits themselves. Healthy and constructive habits are done to keenly pursue personally meaningful end goals. Unhealthy and destructive habits are done to pretendedly quench the seemingly or apparently unachievable end goals, basically only simulating the desired results or goals. Healthy habits involve delayed gratifications, whereas unhealthy habits involve instant gratifications. That is why healthy habits are so much harder to form but are so much easier to break than bad habits, because the rewards took way longer to manifest themselves. And that is exactly how we can tell the state of a person's character, by differentiating people who look for quick fixes or shortcuts and people who actually look for the diamond in the rough and are willing to go the full distance. Scarcity mindset versus abundance mindset. Impulsive driven versus objective driven. Impatient versus patient. Desperate versus composed. Greedy versus calculative. Reckless versus prudent. Lazy versus active. Aimless versus purposeful. Undetermined versus ambitious. Irresolute versus persistent. Distracted versus dedicated and many more. Determining and understanding a person's character through their habits will also inevitably reveal the state of their mental health as well. Remember, where the mind goes, the body follows. An unhealthy mind will always direct its focus on looking for quick fixes because instinctually, its main priority is to get rid of the harmful, unpleasant, and detrimental sensation that a person is experiencing. Now, don't be quick to generalize things and conclude that, oh, if a person does good habits, that means that they have a healthy mind and they do not have any bad habits that can disrupt that state of mind. This is not the case when it comes to reality. Most people, while they have good habits and routines, also can form and have certain bad habits that can often disrupt and worst case seize the flow of a healthy state of mind. Because like I said before, bad habits are more easily formed and good habits are more easily broken because of their respective nature. A person who regularly goes to the gym doesn't always mean that he is not addicted to pornography. A person who regularly read books doesn't mean that he is not suffering dependency on drugs and other sedatives. Bad habits can and will distract you time and time again should you not do something about it. So how can you break from bad habits that have been imprisoning you for a long time? Or at least how can you make an effort to control yourself in order to prevent yourself from falling into the pit of mental misery? 
Well, you have two options. The first one is to replace the bad habits through finding new, profound and healthy fixations that can occupy your mind enough to slowly but surely disregard your thoughts of the bad habits. Ideally, an endeavor or a collection of endeavors that means a lot to a person on a very personal level. A common misconception is that one can simply say, just replace the bad habits with good habits. And while it is technically the idea behind habit replacements, it is not as simple as that. Because should the person does not have any profound interest, curiosity or dare I say it, obsession of a particular endeavor with regards to its routines and rewards, it is much less likely he would commit to it routinely and eventually turning it into a habit. You can't force someone into doing something he doesn't want to do because one's actions are not in anyone's control. It is only him that can make that decision to stop or start doing anything. In my case, if I didn't have any profound interest in fitness and lifting weights, I would not have broken away from my unhealthy habit of regularly drinking alcohol. The second one is instilling a constant state of fear through making the dire consequences of bad habits more plausible. Basically, because we are more attracted to the rewards of an endeavor and because that's how bad habits seduce you into doing them in the first place, i.e. presenting you with instant rewards, albeit artificial, we instead focus on the consequences of what those bad habits can and will eventually do to us both in the short term and long term. And this involves constantly reminding yourself of them through tangible representations of those consequences. Maybe a collection of words on the front page of your journal that you open every day. Or maybe a wallpaper on your phone on which you will have no choice but to glance at every time you turn on your phone. Which is what I did by posting a picture of myself as my phone's wallpaper after a massive hangover looking like an absolute waster of a bum or even downloading an online documentation of someone suffering the dire consequences of those bad habits such as a blog or a YouTube video or an audio podcast session. In the end though, we are what we repeatedly do. And if what you are doing every day does not put you in a good spot physically and mentally by the end of the day, understand and accept the fact that you are in need of change if you do not want to be kept imprisoned within the bottom half of the cycle of defeat. Thank you for watching.